The primary display system has six flat panel display units similar to the 747. There are four graphics generators which generate all the graphic symbols that appear on the display units. Each graphics generator can be thought of as a display channel. Normal system operation is with three channels, each driving two display units. The remaining channel acts as a backup. Any one channel can provide information to the display units, although in a degraded mode. The display units themselves are designated left and right outboard, left and right inboard, and upper and lower center. The lower center display unit as well as the inboard display units are called multifunction displays or MFDs. MFDs can be used to show a variety of information in different display formats. Inboard display unit selectors are located here on the left and right forward panels. These selectors allow the pilots to manually control the inboard display units. Each selector has identical positions. Let's use both selectors to help review their operation. Rotate the left selector to the PFD position. The PFD position selects the primary flight display to the inboard display unit. Notice the PFD is no longer displayed on the outboard display unit. Now rotate the right selector to the ICAST position. Observe that the upper center display unit is blank and ICAS is now displayed on the right inboard display unit. When either of these displays is switched from its normal display unit, the normal display unit blanks. Now rotate both selectors to NAV and watch the displays. The NAV position selects the navigation display to the inboard display unit. Notice the captain's PFD and the ICAST display return to their normal locations. When the switched displays are deselected from the inboard display units, the outboard and upper center display units reinitialize. The PFD, ICAS, and NAV positions allow you to lock that respective display onto the inboard display unit. The selector must be rotated to another position to manually change the display. Now rotate both selectors to the MFD position. NAV is one of two normal selector positions. MFD is the other normal position and also the preflight setting. Maximum display flexibility is achieved by operating the inboard display units as multifunction displays. When MFD is selected from PFD or ICAS, the ND automatically reinitializes on the inboard display unit, the display select panel. The display select panel is located here on the glare shield. The display select panel allows the flight crew to select different displays on the lower center as well as the left and right inboard display units. Let's look at the display select panel controls. These display switches are used to activate a display unit for subsequent display selections. Only one display unit can be selected at a time. Push the left inboard display switch. The enunciator light above the switch indicates that the left inboard display unit is now active. If a display unit is inhibited from accepting inputs, the light will not illuminate. To illustrate this, rotate the right inboard display selector to NAV, then push the right inboard display switch. The enunciator light did not illuminate because the right inboard display unit is currently locked to the navigation display. As a result, other displays cannot be selected. The left inboard display unit remains active instead. Selection of an inboard display unit on the display select panel is inhibited whenever the associated selector is in PFD or NAV. In ICAS, limited display select panel operations are possible. Those operations and other display unit inhibit conditions will be discussed later in this lesson. Before we go on, Return the selector to MFD and push the lower center display switch. Touch the highlighted area. The MFD select switches are used to select MFD displays to the active display unit. 
System synoptics represent the majority of the MFD displays and operate the same as in the 747. Specific features of each display are described in the respective system lessons. Push the electrical synoptic switch. Now push the electrical synoptic switch a second time to remove the electrical synoptic. When the lower center display unit is active, removing an MFD display blanks the display unit. However, on an inboard display unit, the ND displays again, since it is the initialization display on those display units. The navigation display switch is similar to the other MFD switches and provides another way to display the ND on the inboard or lower center display units. The ND, however, is not considered an MFD display. It cannot be removed from the inboard display units, just temporarily replaced. The remaining display select panel control is the ICAS message cancel recall switch which is similar to the cancel recall switch on the 747. Before we continue, here's a chance for you to practice with the display select panel. For this exercise only, the communications display is inhibited because it can appear on only one display unit at any one time. You can select any other combination of switches you desire. Touch the green arrow when you're ready to continue. The Electronic Flight Instrument System, or EFIS, control panels are located here on the glare shield. Let's look at how the display system determines which panel has control over the three possible ND locations. Normally, when an ND is displayed on each inboard display unit, the associated panel controls that display. If only one inboard display unit and the lower center display unit contain NDs, the pilot without an ND on his inboard display unit controls the lower center display unit. If neither inboard display unit contains an ND, but the lower center does, then the left EFIS control panel controls the display. If both inboard display units and the lower center display unit all contain NDs, then the left EFIS control panel also controls the lower center display unit. The left inboard and lower center displays will be identical. MFD formats which require crew interaction, such as the communications display, are controlled with the cursor control devices, or CCDs. Each pilot has a cursor control device located here on the control stand. The cursor control is used to control a cursor on an MFD display that requires a cursor. The MFD that displays the cursor is determined automatically when display select panel selections are made or manually when the cursor location switches are used to activate a cursor on the selected MFD. The cursor location lights on each cursor control device indicate which MFD is displaying its cursor. Each CCD controls a unique cursor symbol. The cursor shown here is controlled by the left CCD. Push the lower center cursor location switch on the right CCD to display the right cursor symbol. Touch the highlighted area. The cursor is moved by sliding a finger across the touchpad. The touchpad is a capacitive glass surface which translates finger motion into cursor movement on the display. Moving the cursor over an active display item selects it. As the cursor moves into an active area, the item is highlighted by a white border. Pushing the cursor select switch activates the selection. Push the right cursor select switch. 
Touch the highlighted area. Touching a corner area immediately moves the cursor to that part of the display. The areas must be touched. Simply sliding a finger to a corner does not have the same effect. Try touching the corners of the right touchpad. Touch the green arrow to continue. Touch the highlighted areas. The cursor control devices are used for making selections on the checklist and communication displays. Let's look at which cursor appears when these two displays are selected. Display the checklist on the left inboard display unit. Touch the highlighted area. Touch the highlighted area. When checklist or communications is selected onto the left or right display unit, the associated cursor for that side appears. Now select the communications display to the right inboard display unit. If different displays are on the display units, both cursors can be used independently. Now select checklist to the right inboard display unit. Touch the highlighted area. Notice the cursor on the left inboard display unit is removed. When the same display is selected in two places, only one cursor can be active. In this case, the last pilot to make the selection will have control. Now select the communications display to the lower center display unit. When selecting a display to the lower center display unit, either cursor could appear. If you wish to control the lower center display unit and the displayed cursor is not yours, pushing the lower center switch on your CCD displays your cursor. Display the first officer's cursor on the lower center display unit. Touch the highlighted area. Notice the first officer's cursor is removed from the right inboard display unit. Each cursor can only appear on one display unit at a time. And both cursors cannot appear on a single display unit at the same time. The last pilot selecting his cursor to a display unit will have control. Next, let's look at the display brightness controls. Manual brightness controls for the pilot's display units are located here on the sidewall panels. Controls for the upper and lower center display units are located on the center display control panel. Each pilot has individual controls to adjust the brightness of the outboard and inboard display units. Separate controls to adjust the upper and lower display units are accessible by either pilot. A smaller inner control is used to adjust the brightness of weather radar returns on an MFD displaying the navigation display. The last controls we'll look at are the display control switches. Display control switches for each pilot's inboard and outboard display units are located on the instrument source select panels. A single switch for the center display units is located on the center display control panel. All of the switches shown here are in the normal pre-flight position. Operation of the navigation source and air data attitude switches are covered in another lesson. All three display control switches operate the same. Push the left display control switch. When the switch is pushed to the alternate position, an alternate display channel is selected for the associated display unit pair. The switches are available for cases where a display failure may go undetected and automatic system reconfiguration does not occur. But what happens if a failure is detected? Let's look at some non-normal conditions. 
Automatic reconfiguration after a display unit failure is similar to what can be done manually using the inboard display selectors. If an outboard display unit fails, the PFD automatically switches to the inboard display unit regardless of the inboard display selector setting. If the upper center display unit fails, the iCast display is switched to the lower center display unit and replaces whatever display is present. When one center display unit fails and the other displays iCast, the remaining display unit then operates in a limited mode. Similarly, whenever an inboard display unit displays iCAS, it too operates in limited mode. For an example of limited mode operations, select the secondary engine display to the lower center display unit. The display unit now shows the compact engine display. This display is created when a display unit is in limited mode and the secondary engine display is selected to the same display unit. Repeated pushes of the secondary engine display switch will toggle the display on and off. Push the secondary engine display switch to remove the compact engine display. When the display unit mode is limited, only the fuel and air synoptic switches remain operable. Display the fuel synoptic. In limited mode, the expanded fuel quantity indications display instead of the fuel synoptic. Now display the air synoptic. Likewise, the pressurization indications display instead of the air synoptic. Features of both indications are discussed in their respective lessons. The single source display's caution message appears when only one graphics generator remains functioning. Left inboard and outboard displays are echoed on the right display units. All right display unit controls are inoperative. The inboard display units can no longer be used as MFDs. The lower center display unit is the only MFD available. Cancel the message. This completes the instruction section of the lesson.